Chapter One: The day shall come. We are having us. We are having us a big Sunday dinner. We were. We were having us a big Sunday dinner. Dara leans, dipping bread in her glass of cold tea. Dara, Dara leans, dipping bread in her glass of cold tea, the way she likes. And Becky pushes her beans up over the edge of her plate in her rush to get them down. Ma gives us her scolding look. Just once in lifetime, just once in my lifetime, she says, "I'd like to see a bite of food go direct from the dish into somebody's mouth without a detour of any kind." She is looking at me when she says it, though. It isn't that I don't like fried rabbit.、Uh, like it fine. I just don't want to bite down on. Box shut is all, and I'm checking each piece. I looked at rabbit over good, Marty,、uh, and you won't find any box shut in that thigh. Box shut. That that says butchering his bread. I shoot him. I shoot him in the neck. Somehow I wish he hadn't said that. I push the meat from one side of my plate to the other, throw the sweet potatoes, and back again. Did it die? Did it die right off? I ask, knowing I can't eat at all unless it had. Soon enough, you sh- you shoot its head clean off. There are that. Darlene asks, "She is like that." Dad chews real slow before he answers, "Not quite," he says, and goes on eating. Which is when I leave the table. The best thing about Sunday is we we eat our big meal at noon. Once you get your belly full, you can walk all over Western Virginia before you're hungry again. Any other day, you start. You start out after dinner. You've got to come back when it's dark. It take, I take the twenty, twenty two rifle that had given me in March on my eleventh birthday, and set out, set out up the road to see what I can shoot. Like to find me an apple. Like to find me an apple hanging way out on a. Branch. See if I can bring it down. Line up a few cans on a rail fence and shoot shoot 'em off. Never shoot at anything moving though. Never had the slightest wish. We live high up in the hills above, friendly but hardly anybody knows where that is. Friendly is near Sistersville, which is half halfway between Wheeling and. Parkersburg used to be. My daddy told me, Sistersville was one of the best places you could live. You could live in the whole state. You could live in the whole state. You ask me the best place to live. I would say right where I. I, I would say right where we are, a little four-room house with hills on the three sides. Afternoon is my second best time to go up. In the hills, though, morning is the best, especially in summer. Early, early morning. On one morning, I saw three kinds of animals, not counting cats, dogs, frogs, cows, and horses. Saw、so、a groundhog, saw、so、a doe with two fawns, and saw、so、a gray fox with a reddish hat, but. Bet his daddy was a gray fox, and his mom was red one. My favorite place to walk is just across this Redley Bridge, where the road curves by the old Shiloh schoolhouse and follows the river.、Um, where the road curves by the old Shiloh schoolhouse and follows the river, river to one side, trees the other. Sometimes a house or two, and this particular afternoon I am about halfway up the road along the river when I see something out of the corner of my corner corner of my eye. Something moves. I look, and about fifteen yards off, 
there's this short-haired dog, white with brown and black spots, not making any kind of noise, just slinking along with his head down, watching me, tail between his legs, like he's hardly got the right to breathe. A beagle, maybe a year or two old. I stopped and the dog stops. Looks like he's been a cut. He's been caught doing something awful. When I can tell, all he really wants is to follow along beside me. Here, boy, I say, slapping my th- thigh. Dog goes down on his stomach, goes down on his m- stomach, groveling about in the grass. I laugh and start over toward him. He's got an old worn-out collar on. Old worn-out collar on. Probably older than he is, but it belonged to another dog before him. Come on, boy, I say, putting out my hand. The dog gets up and backs off. He don't even whimper, like he's lost his bark. Something really hurts inside you when you see a dog. Cringy like that, you know somebody's been kicking at him, beating on him. Maybe it's okay, boy. I say, coming a little closer, but still he backs off. So I just take my gun and follow the river. Every so often, I look over my shoulder, and there he is, the beagle. I stop. He stops. I can see his ribs, not real bad. But he isn't plumped out of、uh, plumped out or anything. There's a broken branch hanging from a limb, out over the water. Broken branch hanging from the limb out over the water, and I'm wondering if I can bring it down with one shot. I raise my gun, and then I think how the sound might scare the dog off. I decide I don't want to shoot my gun much that day. It's a slow river. You walk beside it. You figure it's not even moving. You you walk beside it. You figure it's not even moving. If you stop, though, you can see leaves and things going along. Now and then, a fish jumps. A big big fish. Bass, I think. Dog still tailing me. Tail tucked in. Funny how he don't make a sound. Funny how he don't make a sound. Finally, I sit on a log, put my gun at my feet, and wait. Back down the road, the dog sits too, sits right in the middle of it, head on it, head on its paws. Finally, I sit on a log, put my gun at my feet, and wait. Back down the road, the dog sits too, sits right in the middle of it, and、um, head on its paws. Here, boy, I say again, and pat my knee. He wiggles just a little, but he don't come.、Uh, maybe it's a she dog. Here, girl, <laughs> I say. Dog still don't come. I decide to wait the dog out, but after three or four minutes on the log, it gets boring, and I start off again. She does the so does the beagle. Don't know where you'd end up if you follow the river. All the way. Heard somebody say it curves about, comes back on itself. But if it didn't, if it didn't, and I got home after dark, I'd get a good whopping. So I always go as far as the ford, where the river spills across the path, and then I head back. When I turn around, and the dog sees me coming, he goes off into the woods. I figure that's the last I'll see of the bagel, and I get halfway down the road again before I look back. There he is. I stop. He stops. I go. He goes. And then, hardly thinking on it, I whistle. It's like pressing a magic button. The bagel comes barreling toward me, legs going lickety split. Long ears flopping, tail sticking up like a flag pole. This time, when I put out my hand, he licks all my fingers and jumps up against my leg, making little yelps in his throat. He can't get enough of me. 
like I'd been saying no all all along. And now I'd say yes. He could come. It's a he dog. I like. I like. I thought. Like I thought. Like I thought. Hey boy, you're really something now, aren't you? I'm laughing as the beagle makes circle around me. I squat down and the dog licks my face, my neck. Where, where did it learn to come? If you whistled, to hang back. If you didn't, to hang back. If you didn't, where did you learn to come? If you hit whistled, to hang back. If you didn't. I'm so busy watching the dog. I don't even notice it started to rain. Don't bother me. Don't bother the dog. Neither. I'm looking for the place I first saw him. Does he live here? I wonder. Or the house on up the road? Each place we pass, I figure he'll stop. Somebody come out and whistle, maybe. But nobody comes out, and the dog don't stop. Keeps coming even after we get to the old. Shiloh schoolhouse even starts across the bridge. Tail going like a propeller, he licks my hand every so often to make sure I'm still there. Mouth open like he's smiling. He is smiling. Once he follows me across the bridge, though, and on the on past the grist grist mill, I start to worry. Looks like he's fixing to follow me all the way our house. I am in trouble enough coming home with my clothes wet. My mom's mama died of、um, pneumonia. 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 We don't ever get the chance to forget it. And now I got a dog with me, and we were never allowed to have pets. If you can't afford to feed them and take them. To the vet, and they are sick. When they are sick, they've no longer, they've no right taking them in. They've, you've no right. You have no right taking them in. Ma says, which is true enough. I don't say a word to the beagle the rest of the way home, hoping he'll turn at some point and go back. The dog keeps coming. I get to the front stoop and. I get to the front stoop and say, "Go home, boy," and then I feel my heart squeeze up the ver- squeeze up the way he stops smiling, sticks his tail between his legs again, and slinks off. He goes as far as the sycamore tree, lies down in the in the wet grass, head on his paws. "Whose dog is that?" Ma asks when I come in. I shrug. Just followed me is all. Where did it? Well, did it pick up with you? Up in Shiloh, Shiloh, across the bridge, I say. On the road by the river, bad that Jude Tra- Travers Beagle says that he got himself another hunting dog a few weeks back. Jud got got him a hunting dog. How come he don't treat him right? I ask. How how you know he don't he doesn't? Way the dog acts, scared to pee almost. I say, Ma Ma gives me a look. Don't seem to me, he's got any marks on him. Don't seem to me, he's got any marks on him. Dad says, studying him from our window. Don't have to mark a dog to hurt him. I'm thinking. Just don't pay him any attention, and he'll go away. Dad says, and get out of those wet clothes. Ma tells me, you want to follow your grandma's slaughter to the grave. I change clothes, then sit down and turn on t- turn on the TV, which only has two channels. On Sunday afternoons, it's preaching and baseball. I watch baseball. I watch baseball for an hour. Then I get up and sneak to the window. Ma knows what I'm about. That shallow dog still out there? She asks. I nod. He's looking at me. He sees me there, at the window, and his tail starts to thump. I name him Shiloh.
Chapter Two. Sunday night supper is what, whatever is left from noon. If nothing is left over, Ma takes cold cornmeal mush, fries up big salad, fries up big slabs, and we eat with, we eat it with, caro syrup. But this night there's still rabbit. I don't want any, but I know Shiloh does. I wonder how long I can keep pushing that piece of rabbit around my plate. Not very long, I discover. You going to eat that meat, or you just playing with it? Dad asks. If you don't want it, I'll take it for lunch tomorrow. I'll take it for lunch tomorrow. I'll eat. I'll eat it. I say. Don't you be giving it to the dog. Don't you be giving it to that dog, says Ma. I take a tiny bite. What's the doggy? What's the go- doggy going to eat then? asks Becky. She's three, which is four years younger than Darlin. Nothing here. That's what, says Ma. Becky and Darlin look at that. Now I have them feeling sorry for the beagle. Now I have them feeling. Sometimes girl children get what they want easier than I do, but not this time. Dogs going right back across the river when we get through eating, says Dad. If that that's just new dog, he probably don't doesn't have any doesn't have sense enough yet to find his way home again. We'll put him in the jeep. And drive him over. Don't know what else I figured that to say. Do I really think he's gonna t- he's gonna tell me to wait till morning? And if the beagle stay here, we can keep him. I try all kinds of ways to figure how I could get that rabbit meat off my plate and into my pocket. But Ma's watching every move I make, so I excuse myself and go outside and over to go outside and over to the chicken coop. It's off toward the back where Ma can can't see. We keep three hands, and I take one of the two eggs that was in the nest and carry it out behind the bushes. I whistle softly. Shiloh comes looping. Toward me, I crack the egg and empty it out in my hands. Hold my hold my hands down low, and shallow it the egg, licking my hands clean afterwards. Then, curling his tongue down between my fingers to get every little bit. Good boy, shallow, I whisper and stroke him all over. I hear the back screen slam, and Dad comes out on the soup stoop. Marty, yeah, I go around, shallow at my wheels, at my heels. Let's take that dog home now. The Dad goes over and opens the door of the jeep, of the jeep. Shallow puts his ta- tr- tail between his legs and just stands there. So I go around. To the other side, get in and whistle. Shallow leaps up onto my lap, but he don't look too happy about it. For the first time, I have my arms around him. He feels warm, and when he stroke him, when I stroke him, I can feel places on his body where he has ticks. Dog has ticks. I tell my dad, just take them off. Dad says, "What if he doesn't?" It's his concern, Marty. Not yours. It's not your dog. You keep to your own business. I press myself against the back of the seat as we start down our bumpy dirt driveway toward the road. I want to be a vet someday. I tell my dad. Hum, he says. I want to be a traveling vet. I want to be a traveling vet, the kind that has his office, the kind that. Has his office in a van and goes around to people's homes. Don't make folks come to him. Read read about it. I read about it in a magazine at school. 
You know what you have to do to be bad, to be a bad. You know what you have to do. You what you have to do to be be a vet. That asks, go got to go to school. I know that. Got to go to school. I know that. You've got to have college training, like a doctor almost. Takes a lot of money to go to veterinary veterinary school. My dream sort of leaks out like water in a paper bag. I could be a vet. Her veterinarian's helper, I suggest my second choice. You maybe could says that and points the jeep up the road into the hills. Dusk is settling in now, still warm though. A warm July night. Tree looks dark against the red sky. Lights coming on in a house here. Another one there. I'm thinking how in. Any of these houses, there's probably somebody who take better care of Shallow than Judd Travers Travers would. How come this dog had to be his? The reason I don't like Judd Travers Travers is a whole lots of reasons. Not the least is that I was in the corner store, was down on friendly, and so Judd shit. Mr. Wallace, at the cash register, Jod gives Jod gives the man a ten and gets him to talking. Then, when Mr. Wallace gives him change, says he give him a twenty. <clears throat> he give him a twenty. I blink like I can't believe Jod done that, and old Mr. Wallace is all confused. So I say, no, I think he given you a ten. Jod glares at me, whips out of it, whips out of out his wallet and waves a twenty dollar bills in front of my eyes. Whose pictures on this bill, boys? It says, I don't know. He gives me a look, says, I thought so. That's Andrew Jackson. He says, I had two of them in my wallet. When I walked in here, and now I only got one. This here man's got the other. I want my change, Mister Wallace. He's so flustered. He just digs in his money drawer and gives Judd change for a twenty. And after. And after. Afterward. I thought, what I did, Andrew Jackson have to do with it. I thought, what did Andrew Jackson have to do with it? <laughs> Just so fast talking, he can get away with anything. Don't know anybody who likes him much, but around here, folks keep to their own business. Like that says, in Tyler country, that's important. Way it's always been, anyhow. Another reason I don't like Judd Travel Travers is he spits tobacco out the corner of his mouth, uh, and he if he doesn't like you, and he sure doesn't like me, he sees just how close he can spit where you're standing. Third reason I don't like him is because he was at the. Fairgrounds last year, same day we were, and it seemed like every place I was, he was in front of me, blocking my view, standing in front of me at the mud bog, mud bog, sitting in front of me at the tractor tractor pull, and rising, rising right up, out of his seat at the Jordan Globe of Death Motorcycle Act, so. I missed the best part. Fourth reason I don't like him is because he kills deer out of reason. He says he doesn't, doesn't, but I see he, I, I've seen him once just about dusk with a young buck strapped over the hood of his truck. He tells me the buck running, running in front of him. On the road, and he accidentally ran over it. 
ran over it. I saw the bullet hole myself. If he got caught, he'd have to pay two hundred dollars more than he's got in the bank. I'll bet. We're in Shiloh's. We are in Shiloh now. Dad's crossing the bridge by the old abandoned grazed mill, turning at the board up school, and for the first time I can feel Shiloh's body again. Body began to shake. He's trembling. All over, I swallow. I try to say something to my dad and have to swallow again. How do you go about reporting some someone who do, doesn't? How do you go about reporting someone who doesn't take care of his dog? Right, I ask finally. Who are you fixing to report, Marty? Judd. If this dog's mistreated, he is only about one out of fifty thousand animals. That is. Dad says, folks even bring them up here in the hills and let them out. Figure they can live on rats and rabbits. Wouldn't be the first dog that wasn't treated right. But this one come to me to help him. I insist. Knew that's why he was following me. I got hooked on him. Dad and I want to know he is treated right. Dad? And I want to know he's treated right. For the first time, I can tell that's getting impatient with me. <gasps> now you get that out of your head right now. If it's Trevor, Trevor's dog, it's no mind of ours how, how he treats it. What if he was a child? I ask him, getting too smart for my own good. If some kid was shaking like If some kid was shaking like this dog is shaking, like like this dog is shaking, you wouldn't feel no pull for keeping an uh, eye on him, Marty. That says, and now his voice is just plumb tired. This here's a dog, not a child, and it's not our dog. I want you to quit going on about it, going on about it here. I shut up then. Let my hands run over Shiloh's body, like maybe everywhere I touch, I can protect him somehow. Let my hands run the hands run over Shiloh's body, like maybe everywhere I touch, I can protect him somehow. We are getting closer to the trailer, where Judd lives with his other dogs, and already they are barking up a storm, hearing that jeep. Come up around. Come up the road. Dad's pull over. You wanna let him? You wanna let him up? You wanna let him out? He says. I shake my head hard. I am not letting him out. Here, till I know for sure he belongs to Judd. I am asking for a slap in the face. But Dad doesn't say anything. Just gets out of. Out of. Out, uh, out, just gets out and goes up the board. Judd has laid out in place of a sidewalk. Judd's at the door of his trailer already, in his undershirt, peering out. Looks like Ray Preston, he says, through the screen. How are you doing, Judd? Judd comes out on the little porch he's built. At the side of his trailer, and they stand there and talk a while. Up here in the hills, you hardly ever get down to business right off. First, you say your how dies, and then you talk about anything else but what you come for. And finally, when the mosquitoes start to bite, you say what's on your mind. But you always edge into it, not to offend. I can hear little bits of piss, little bits and pieces floating out over the yard. The rain, the truck, the tomatoes, the price of gasoline, and all the while, Shiloh lays low in my lap, trail between his legs, shaking like a window blind in a breeze. And then the awful words. Say, Judd, my boy was a 
here along the river this afternoon and a beagle followed him followed him home don't have any tags on his collar but i'm remembering you got yourself another hunting dog and wondered if he might be yours i'm thinking this is a bad mistake maybe it isn't just at all and he is such a liar he'll say it was just to get himself still another animal to be mean to Judd hardly lets him finish starts off across a muddy yard in his boots sure as hell bad it is he says can't keep that coon dog home to save my soul every time i take him hunting he runs off before i'm thorough throw throw i've been out all day with the dogs and they all come back but him i can hear just heavy footsteps coming around to side of the jeep and i can smell his chewing tobacco uh, strong as coffee yep he says thrusting his face in the open window that's him all right he opens the door get on down here he says and before i can even give the dog one's last pet cello leaps off my lap leaps off my lap onto the ground and connects with Judd's right foot he yelps and run off behind the trailer tail tucked down belly to the ground all Judd's dog chained about back bark like crazy i jump out of the jeep too please don't kick him like that i say some dogs like just like to run he runs all over creation just say says i can tell he is studying me in the dark trying to figure what's it to me i'll keep an eye i'll keep an eye out for him i say anytime i see him away from home i'll bring him back i promise just don't kick him judd only growls he could be a fine hunting dog but he tries my patience i'll leave him be tonight but he wanders off again i'll what up the daylight of him guarantee you that i swallow and swallow and all the way home i can't speak a word trying to hold the tears back